this video will get me in some type of trouble. <laughs> it's kind of controversial. Uh, it's about the heat. And I'll just start off and say this, the Miami Heat, this Heat team, uh, Bam Adebayo, Duncan Robinson, Justice Winslow, Jimmy Butler, the team we have right now is better to watch and they're putting up better numbers than LeBron, Wade, and Bosch. Let me explain. The thing about this team, and one of the biggest things you see in their numbers is they play five-man ball. They're playing unselfish basketball. It's a five-man team. I call this a balanced system approach because when you build, when you're building hardware, you're building so that your RAM, your hard drive, your CPU all work cohesively with one another so that my software, when it's running, it's not just hogging up all the RAM, hitting the CPU too hard. It's a balanced system, meaning everyone chips in every piece, you know, services the software so you have a much smoother, you're much smoother if you're rendering, you're much smoother if you're doing like quantum computing, anything like that. It, it's about having a balanced system. And that's what five man ball is. I call it balanced system because my hardware side and my software side, the tech side, but that it's basically the same thing as five man ball. You don't, it's very hard for a team to play five man ball because you will always have two players that will either want to hog the ball or feel as though they're the crux of the team and without them, you don't get the shot off, you don't get the playoff. So I, what the thing is with, the, with this Heat team is you're seeing five players who are unselfish, five players who early in this season can play together and win. This is for years, this has been the Heat's problem after, you know, especially after LeBron left. We could not win early in the season to carry us into the playoffs because by the time after, by the time you hit mid-January, this is before all stuff, but by the time you hit mid-January, your body's just feeling different against all these games. So you win now and you win early because your body's a little bit fresher and you're not as worn down as yet. For years, the Heat couldn't do this. For years, they would you know get this horrible start and then they would miss the, the playoffs by like one game, which I don't know, nothing pissed me off. Nothing pissed me off more than that. Uh, this year, we don't, we don't have that issue. We're starting off strong because everybody's learning to play with each other so early. And you have a bunch of players who represent much more of a Miami team than LeBron ever did. I can't swim, so I, I, I have no reason. Either. You can't swim? You got hood tendencies, man. You would run with us. Give me some. You got hood tendencies. With LeBron's game, Wade and Bosch had to change their game to satisfy him. You have Duncan Robinson. You have Bam. You have Justice Winslow. You have all of them uh, feeding off of Jimmy Butler and not catering specifically to his shot, but playing five-man ball with him. So for me, that's the most important thing is you have a cohesive team and you have a team that can play well off each other and you have so many pieces on the floor where if they do run a double, you have a threat open, which was the same system with LeBron. They're putting up their numbers. <laughs> their numbers are better than the big three. And I'll say it, I would much rather watch this team than LeBron, Wade, and Bosch. Say what? And that's not to say that I don't miss Dwayne Wade, I absolutely do, but the thing about that is, this team is so nice and refreshing because we lose him, but there's so many people you're now invested in that are young and that are hungry. To me, Miami ball is gully ball. To me, it's, it's, it's rough and it's about making a name for yourself. LeBron's kind of the opposite of Miami because he's been anointed since high school. You have a lot of these players here who you, you didn't know their name and no one took them seriously up until like say two weeks ago, three weeks ago. 
to me, that's Miami ball. It's more of like a scar face scenario than what LeBron projects, which is, I think he's perfect in LA because he's much more Hollywood. But to me, someone like Duncan Robinson, someone like Tyler Hero, uh, Derek Nunn, that's much more the story of Miami than say LeBron because he had a name when he came down here. And it's much easier for Spolstra to coach because now you have someone, they'll actually listen to him. You have someone that doesn't mind taking direction. And I, I've said this for years and I'll just say it one more time. Lakers are gonna run into a problem when they, when they go into the playoffs. That's where they fall apart because they don't have a coach. And they don't have anybody on that team that'll listen because everyone's gonna wanna do their own thing and everybody's gonna, gonna think that they're too smart you, you know, to listen to what's going on. And in the playoffs, you need someone to say, hey, it's much easier for someone to look in on you and see your, where you're messing up and where you need to take direction than you looking at it yourself and saying, oh, okay, that's what I need. That's what a good coach does. And that's the thing about Riley specifically. He sees undeveloped talent. <laughs> He sees it the way nobody else can. And that's why you have the Heat team we have now. And I I much rather watch this team than watch Wade, Bosch, and LeBron. I liked Wade outside of the big three. He had to sacrifice his game for LeBron though. So I, I don't think those years were really great for him or glorious for him. I. And I didn't like the way it ended. I, you know, Bosch is injured and LeBron just runs. So <laughs> I'd much rather watch this team who is surprising, who is young, who is hungry, versus I, I'd much rather watch them than the original big three. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. That doesn't mean I don't miss Wade. That just means that this team is so surprisingly good. It's nice to watch. So let me know what you think. Maybe, maybe you're just ready to yell at me. That's okay too. <laughs> I, I'm here for it. To so quote the greatest show on earth, live long and prosper. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Poof, poof. Someone's gonna call me a Wade hater. That's not true. <laughs>